Dat23 is here. Dat23 for Automation360 was recently rolled out to the Automation360 cloud control rooms and is available for download for anyone who has an on-prem environment. In this video, I want to walk through the top five developer features as defined by Micah Smith. And I want to highlight some of these cool features that you may have missed or you may not have seen yet um, because I think they're all worth checking out to uh, enhance your bot builds. So coming up at number five, recorder improvements. You now have the ability to do object cloning on cross-domain iframes. This is a big deal if you're using iframes. An iframe is usually like a little frame that shows up on a web application that is actually from another domain. It's almost like that little web page just loaded in there. And you can now do object cloning with that and interface with that iframe. Additionally, there is a selectable list now for Git property values. So let's say that I'm trying to do some kind of action on a web page where there's already a field showing up, right? And I need to read the value from that field, or there's five fields showing up, and I need to read the values from those. The way that I would do that is I would set up a recorder action. I would capture that specific field, and then I would select the Git property as my action. Now, the way that it's worked previously up to dot 23 is that I have to type in exactly what property I wanted to extract. So if it's the case of like just a regular input field, I might say HTML inner text or HTML value, but I would have to type all of that in myself. Now in dot 23, there's actually a drop down. So if you click this little down arrow on the right side of the field, it will show you all of the properties that are available for that object. You can select one of those properties. You could still fill one in manual keystrokes if you want to, but this will definitely help cut down on keystroke errors or weird goofy errors like that where you forgot a space, you accidentally put in a space um, as you're trying to extract different property values. Number four is the credential package. So this one is huge, especially for people who are doing advanced bots where you're starting to have a master task called different subtasks. There are many use cases where, hey, I need to call a subtask, but I need to pass it a credential, some secure value. And I really don't wanna do that, like coming from my master bot to my subtask and do that with an insecure string. That's really not like the greatest way to do it. And so with dot 23, you do have this credential package and using this credential package, you can maintain a credential variable value and you can pass that variable to your subtask as a credential. So in that way, your subtask can be created and defined and set up in a way that it's kind of agnostic to exactly which credential is being passed in. It will work no matter what. And then your master bot, you would call exactly which credential you wanna pass into that subtask. Now, with the credentials, they can come from either a credential from your vault itself, and you can pass that over, or it could actually be an insecure string or a variable that I pass in. So if in my master bot, I need to create a credential and I wanna map in an insecure string or just some other random variable that I have into that credential value, I could do that and then still call my subtask. But again, just a much more way, uh, secure way for me to be able to pass credentials between a master bot and a subtask. Coming in at number three was a developer requested um, feature, which is to copy variables to clipboard. So if I'm creating a bot, and let's say I've got that bot set up, I've got 15 variables that I like to have for this bot, and I wanna set up a subtask for that bot as well, but I want those same variables and I don't wanna to have to go just like type them all in again, or you know, I want the same names, but I don't wanna go manually into that. What I can do is from the variables pane in the top left corner, I can click this button with the three ellipses and select the option that says copy variables to shared clipboard. When I do that, there's gonna be a little pop-up that shows up with all of my user defined variables. And I can select from that list exactly which variables I wanna copy over. Now, the thing I wanna call out with this is that it is going to copy all variable properties as well. So if my variable has a default value, that's gonna be copied in addition to the variable name and things like that. If it's defined as an input or an output variable, that's gonna be copied. So when I'm doing that, I just wanna make sure that I know that all of those you know, properties for the variables are also being copied over. And that's great uh, if that's how you want it set up, but just be aware of that so that if you need to go and make some changes to those variables after they've been copied, you can do that. Number two is RE Web Package Updates. So 
Up until now, most people have been using ARI where it's a request that starts with a human action, right? I've got an ARI form that's set up. Maybe a human has to enter three or four different fields. That kicks off the ARI process. The ARI process starts to run and invokes my different bots as it needs to and possibly other human forms as well. Using this ARI web create request action, I have the ability to create ARI requests directly from a bot. So in this case, my bot could be the start of my process, right? My bot is executing. My bot runs into some kind of exception. My bot runs into some kind of step within the process where it identifies it needs a human. My bot can create that RE request and that would create a task for a human. And the human could then go complete whatever task that was. And that would initiate the RE process, which could then you know, kick off another bot, whatever needs to happen next. So the way that you do this is you would browse out to, I'll get my head out of the way. You browse out and select your RE process. Your RE process is defined with a starting form. That form establishes what input values are required for this process to initiate. Those values are automatically mapped here. So, you know, the, the RE process I selected here had a text box, had a number and had a file. Those are what's showing up for my input values. I can then map variables or I could hard code values into these. And then as a return, I get back the RE request ID. So when this runs as a bot, it's going to create that request. As a return, I'll get back a number value, which is the RE request ID. I can then use that request ID to assign that task to a specific team or to a specific individual, or I could just save it out for tracking to know that like, hey, this bot ran, it kicked off an RE request, and this is the request ID that it started. Finally, the number one feature for dot 23, again, according to Micah Smith, so all of these have an asterisk, uh, Compare versions of bots, and this is huge. This is great. In .22, we had the ability to have different versions of bots, and we could do a checkout of an older version if we needed to, but this is really the meat of it where we can actually compare versions in addition to checking out older versions. So I can compare any two code versions, and the really cool thing here is I can see the differences in the actions used, so the code itself, the differences in the variables that have been used or defined, the differences in the triggers that have been defined, and also the differences in the package used. So if it was additional packages that have been used or if it's different package versions and I've gone through and updated packages as a part of that process, I could see that. And this is super helpful because it really enables me to take a look at two different versions of my same bot and see exactly what's different between them, not just the code, but I'm also seeing what variables are defined differently, what uh, bot packages have been used differently, and what triggers may be set up differently. So this is a huge feature. I would encourage you to go check this out. It highlights the lines that have been added or removed in red or green. So it's super visual, super easy to see. Uh, and, and again, you can click through these different tabs at the top to see variables, triggers, and the differences in packages. So. Those are my top five favorite features for the dot 23 release. I want to know what your favorite features are in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite feature is for dot 23. If it's one of mine. Awesome. If it's a totally different one that I missed, I want to hear about that too. Okay. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe for more automation anywhere content. Again, my name is Micah Smith. Go be great.